Hello there, this is Darth Melvin, leader of the Knights of Melvin. The Force Awakens was bad, but in 2017, we didn't really know how bad it was. There were a lot of questions left unanswered. The Last Jedi didn't answer any of these questions. It starts with Disney not making sure we had plans for all three movies. We also had J.J. Abrams who left everything open-ended in his script. Then Ryan Johnson was given full creative control, and him and J.J. were not on the same page. They barely discussed anything about this sequel. However, based on how bad The Rise of Skywalker was, I don't think it really would have made any difference. This movie gets a lot of hate, and rightfully so. But I think this movie gets too much hate because not enough hate is directed at the other two movies. So, in this review, I will try to be as fair as possible. Every Star Wars movie has a time skip, and we didn't get one this time. The space scene is whatever. I can take it or leave it. General Hux is, I guess, a joke now in this movie, thanks to Ryan Johnson. This takes us to Luke Skywalker. Everyone rages about how Luke tossed the lightsaber. They blame Ryan Johnson for ruining Luke's character. The thing is, don't they remember what happened in The Force Awakens? Luke abandoned the Republic after failing Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren killed all of his students. Then the First Order came to power because Kylo Ren became Snoke's bitch. And they used Starkiller Base to kill billions of people. That is thanks to Luke Skywalker running away from the Republic. Ryan Johnson didn't have to double down on Luke being a bitch, but this was already established by J.J. Abrams in The Force Awakens. So this is what he was given by J.J. Abrams, and everyone is mad at Ryan Johnson for ruining Luke when really J.J. Abrams ruined Luke. Ryan Johnson just didn't save Luke. Think about it. Even if Ryan Johnson pulled a 180 with Luke's character... Luke would still be responsible for all those deaths and letting Kylo Ren kill all of his students. Next we got Kylo Ren destroys his mask. This is my favorite scene in The Last Jedi. Snoke rips Kylo Ren a new asshole for losing to Rey, like he should. Now, I think Rey winning is just a laughable concept, but regardless, he lost to an inexperienced Force user. This was because he was conflicted and just a bitch in general. Snoke rips him apart and makes fun of his mask, so then Kylo Ren destroys the mask. Back to Act 2, Luke is being a bitch. Shout out to Mark Hamill. He complained the entire way about his character. He knew what was going on. His character and the script sucked, but I enjoyed his acting. I thought he delivered his lines really well. It just, I think he made the most out of the terrible script. Next, the First Order tracked the Resistance, and they're going to take out the Resistance. Kylo Ren has a chance to kill his mother, but the sequel trilogy has no balls. He doesn't do it. It would have been great character development. Instead, we got a Mary Poppins Princess Leia. We were supposed to get three lessons. We only got two. We also didn't get much screen time for Luke instructing Rick. 35 minutes in, we get the Holdo introduction. And this is the beginning of the end for the movie. It just progressively gets worse each scene. She is so cringe with Poe. Identity politics, she just doesn't need a stupid man telling her what to do. Next, Finn is introduced to Rose Tico, who is the worst Star Wars character ever. Instead of developing Finn's character, he regresses and actually plans to escape the Resistance. So these two horrible scenes connect in the next scene. Finn and Poe and Rose discuss how to fix their issue with the First Order. So, whatever, that could be interesting if they sneak onto a Star Destroyer, but they need to take a tour on Canto Bite to find the Codebreaker. And at this point, we are wasting way too much time already on a bullshit story arc that no one cares about. Next is the Force Connection scenes. They are not dyad scenes, they are Force Connection scenes. We arrive on Canto Bite at 54 minutes. This is about 15 minutes of straight up bullshit. The only thing we care about is Luke, Ray, and Kylo Ren, and they wasted so much time on this terrible shit. We get to the shirtless Kylo Ren force connection scene. This is really the first sign that Raylo can be a thing. Ray is into the wide physique. 
and Kylo has probably always wanted to get on Rey's ace. The next Force connection scene is very strange because all of a sudden, they just really like each other. It doesn't make any sense that they just love each other after a couple Force connection scenes. I think there should have been a lot more dialogue, but Ryan Johnson's terrible. So Rey does her Luke Skywalker impression from Return of the Jedi. She tries to turn Kylo Ren by flying directly to the First Order. This is such a stupid decision. She has been with Luke for maybe a day, and now she's ready to leave and take on First Order? It's such crap. An hour and a half in, Cantabite is over, but the Rose and Finn arc is not. They are going on the Star Destroyer, and at this point, no one cares. Of course, Rey's plan fails, and she's brought to Snoke. Snoke reveals that he was the one who bridged their minds. She fell right into his trap. This is Retcon in The Rise of Skywalker. They are a Force dyad, so their minds are connected anyways, but that Retcon makes zero sense because Snoke bridged their minds. He set a trap for them. Killing off Snoke was a bad move, but with a trilogy that lacked balls, this one was bold. The problem is there was no plans to kill off Snoke, there was no plans to fill the void, so Ryan Johnson again is a fucking moron. Ray should have been fucking killed in this fight. This is her second lightsaber fight. She had one day of training with Luke, and in this movie they literally make her equal to Kylo Ren. Snoke is dead, Kylo Ren could fill that void, he had potential. Ryan Johnson was developing this. He offers Ray a chance to rule with him, she declines. He could have just really got dark for episode 9 and live up to being the main villain. But J.J. Abrams doesn't know what he's doing, and they had to bring back Palpatine. So we're on Crate. Finn is going to sacrifice himself. At this point, they really ruined his character arc. This could have been the most fitting end for him, and Rose gets in the way. Luke arrives on Crate with his Force projection. He takes on the whole First Order by himself, like he hinted at the beginning of the movie. He is also attempting to redeem himself. Now, he's still responsible for the billions of deaths from Starkiller Base, but it's a good attempt. The problem is he makes Kylo Ren look like an idiot. I would have preferred a real lightsaber duel. We didn't get a real lightsaber duel in this movie. We basically didn't get a good one for the whole fucking sequel trilogy. So, Luke dies, ending the Disney Luke Skywalker character arc. The Resistance escapes and they will live on to fight the First Order. We get Broom Boy and the movie ends with Broom Boy. The most awkward ending imaginable. End of movie. Everyone absolutely hates this movie and they give the other ones a pass, Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker. I think the rage is misguided. I wish their rage was directed at each of the three films instead of just one. They were all bad. Ryan Johnson wasn't the only bad director. J.J. Abrams was bad too. J.J. Abrams directed two terrible movies compared to one. Ryan Johnson gets blamed for his script. He really didn't have anything to work with. J.J. Abrams left everything open-ended. You can blame Disney for the most part for the dysfunction in the planning. Become a knight. Subscribe to the channel. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural.